here with Tom Jarvis. He's running for city council. Tom, why don't you tell us a little bit of, uh, about yourself and why you're running for city council? Ah, nice to see you. Well, actually, I have been in town for quite a number of years. Uh, in fact, I started coming up here back in the late 70s, had some relations, and uh, lived here for the better part of the 80s, left for about 15 years, returned in 05, mm -hmm. and saw a lot of changes. Town has always had a, a lot of meaning to me because coming here as such a young person, a lot of my firsts and uh, you know, sort of life-changing moments happen in this town. Right. Uh, so why are you running? Uh, why I'm running is, uh, well, basically I'm a, a concerned citizen of Yellowknife. I've been here for a good long time and I plan on being here for a good long time. In fact, my wife and I are property owners downtown and we have absolutely no plans on leaving Yellowknife anytime soon, uh, near intermediate or even long term. Mm -hmm. uh, so I figured, you know, it's time to actually step up to the plate give a little, back, little bit back to the community and uh, uh, express some of the things that have concerned me and concerned people that I've spoke with over the last number of years through my uh, uh, different networks, social and, and professional. Seems to be a number of concerns that continue to come up and I figured, well, this is the opportunity. What would you say are the top issues for this election campaign? I would say the top issues, uh, uh, there, there's a couple actually and, and they're somewhat related to each other. Uh, first and foremost, uh, I would say the quality of life downtown has been negatively impacted over the last couple of years by a, well, basically a certain subset within our homeless population. Uh, we've always had a homeless population in Yellowknife, although it has dramatically increased over the last number of years. And what I found is within this subset, there's a very aggressive group uh, that are really impacting people's lives. Uh, particularly, there's a number of women I know, uh, one that I'm married to actually, that are actually nervous to go out on the streets in Yellowknife in the evening. Now, if you'd asked me this 20 years ago, would somebody be nervous to go on the streets in Yellowknife in the evening? You know, we would all laugh that idea. But it's not a laughing matter anymore, and, and I think something really needs to be done. It's got to be addressed. What that would be specifically, well, we're going to have to look into a few different things. Potentially, we may have to empower bylaw to enforce different bylaws much in the way a, uh, uh, an out-of-control house party uh, gets visited and ticketed uh, once you're past 11 o'clock if you're disturbing the quality of life of your neighbours. We're facing a similar thing here, but it's happening in a public space. Mm -hmm. uh, this might need to be explored. Uh, as well, many have noticed, I'm not the only one, uh, that the numbers have increased. Now, we have always had homeless people, and we probably always will, unfortunately. That goes back as long as man has been around. Uh, fortunately, most of them, through some of the great programs that we do have in place, gradually can get help and move off. But there is that hardcore subset that seems to be the problem. Okay. Are there any other issues you think we need to address? Uh, something else I think that should be taken a look at, and of course it's kind of a hot topic right now, is the 50-50 plan. Mm -hmm. Now, that, that was one of the final pushers for me. Uh, like, I don't want to bash City Hall. I mean, everybody who has been there in the past council, everybody comes with great intentions and everybody wants to improve things. Uh, but to me, I, I question the decision of buying a property that had sat on the market for well over 10 years without having a plan in place before the purchase itself was made. Uh, we own it now. That ship sailed. We basically have a couple of options. One, I think we could try to sell it that may be difficult uh, just due to the fact that there is an easement and for all intents and purposes it is two lots and a lot of people aren't aware of that. Mm -hmm. uh, something else we may be able to look at is uh, perhaps a municipal garage. Mm -hmm. Parking downtown for downtown workers, this is a complaint I'm hearing an awful lot of. And okay. of course that's partially tied into the expansion of parking meters all over the place. A lot of people had their secret little spot they could park and walk to work. Well, yeah. A lot of those spots are no longer available. Mm -hmm. If we did have a, a parking lot there, if it's feasible, it's got to be looked at. This is an asset that could potentially pay for itself. That would allow people more access to the mall. We've got three buildings full of government workers, mm -hmm. five days of the week right across the street. Foot traffic through the mall can't hurt anybody. Mm -hmm. Okay. Is there any final thoughts uh, that you'd like to share with our uh, readers? Uh, well, one thing I would like to share with you is, uh, as I said before, I don't want to bash those who have come before me. I mean, this town has always been a great place to uh, live in, and it's incrementally better over the years. Each, uh, each council does what they can, and as, as someone running for council for the first time, my personal philosophy is you want to basically leave the place even a small bit better than you've found it. 
and I would encourage those of you to think hardly, hard about the issues, and uh, I ask for your vote, and please vote for the good of the city. Well, thanks very much for joining us, uh, Tom, and uh, good, uh, congratulations, or good luck in the upcoming election. Yeah, thank, thank you, you.